guys, Roger, thanks for dropping by. <coughs> Let the fun begin. 2023 Project Orchids. This is the video showing the choices that you can make. There are 18 plants to look at and they've been chosen for a reason. They haven't just been chosen because they're the best. They haven't been chosen because they're going to die halfway through. <laughs> Um, they've been chosen because they've got something that should be happening during the course of the season. Um, some are actually seasonal plants. Um, many will need a repot. Most will bloom, so we can look at buds and spikes developing, and staking if necessary, and um, you know, dealing with anything that happens after blooming. Um, so they're, they're, they've been selected for a reason. You get to choose up to eight. They will all have a pop-up with their name and they're numbered. And I've numbered them in my notes so that you and me and <laughs> my notes don't get confused because with me or with my part it's easily done. The confused bit I mean. So that's, that's the procedure basically. I will show all 18 plants in this video. I'm not going to start going into their care or anything like that in this video. I will merely be saying why I've selected them as one of the choices. And that's as far as it will go. So it will be a quick look, quick sort of turn around the plant sort of thing. I won't be doing it on the tripod. I'll hand hold so that I can you know, move around the plant. And we'll look at each one brief description of why it's been included and a brief description of what to expect which is the why basically the, the what to expect is why I've chosen it confused yet well I am um, so don't forget you get to vote in the comments on this video um, quite a few people started making selections on my Sunday chat well although their choices have been noted they won't get totaled up because they're not on this video. So you need to put a comment on this video with your choices. You don't have to choose eight. You can just choose one. Yeah? It's entirely up to you, but there are up to eight. We will have eight 2023 Project Orchids voted on by yourselves and um, we'll go from there. So uh, this is fiddly now because I've, I've got to keep going to my notes, having a look at what the next plant is find it, get it out, which might mean moving a load of plants, get it over onto the table, film it, put it back, go and have a look at me notes, get the next one. I was going to do them in groups, but it'll just confuse people. So we'll film them one at a time, get the pop up and the number up the top, and then you can have a think about which ones you would like to see and a complete season's progress for that plant. That's what we're doing this year. So let's get going. Okay, plant number one then is a Bretonia Shelob Tolkien. Now these are still being sold as Miltasia. Well, the Tassia bit is sort of okay because it tells you it's a Brassia. But what's the Milt? Is that Miltonia or Miltoniopsis? So it's been chosen a new intergeneric name, Bratonia, which tells you exactly what it is. The, the Brat bit being the Brassia and the Tonia being Miltonia because it can't be anything else. So this one came from Sean last time I went to Burnham's. Um, he had quite a few of my plants, I had quite a few of his. Every single one of these mature bulbs has bloomed. So they can't bloom again. So what we need for this one is new growths. Also, it's got quite a lot of algae in the pot. It will get a repot and it will get that quite soon. So this is a representative of the Oncidium Alliance um, and is predominantly a Brassia spider orchid. So um, the position it's in at the moment is new growths are starting, which will give me some new roots to work with. I can see one here, one here, two, there's probably going to be three or four new growths, but there's a minimum of two. So that will get a repot. Um, if it does produce blooms, there will be some staking involved because the spikes are long. Um, so that's the first one, plant number one. Plant number two is a Cattleya 
currently in a holy clay pot. It's been in there quite a while. It will get a repot and it will come out of the holy clay pot, probably with great difficulty, and go into a more normal pot. Um, these are keeping the uh, roots too cold in my new environment. So this has got a mature growth here with a sheath. This one has a double sheath and I believe there's buds in there so we should get blooms on there. There is another new growth pushing on down in here. Um, whether that will mature in full size or not I don't know. And one thing I've just noticed is due to this exceptionally cold weather that we're getting I'm getting condensation on the roof that in some cases is dripping on the plants. So hopefully this cold weather will be over soon. Anyway, so that'll be a repot. This is a genuine cattleya, not a sort of pretend one. Uh, Siang Yu Red Pearl Red Dragonfly. It's my only red cattleya and it has lovely clusters of lovely deep red blooms. Um, so that's that one representative of the Cattleya Alliance, but an actual Cattleya. Right, next we have a Sologeny, so this is plant number three. Sologeny, still being sold as all Cratia, but it's been renamed Natida, or Nitida, however you want to say it. Um, I'll put both names up there. Now I've chosen this one out of the three Sologenies I've got, because it is the smaller <laughs> and there's a logic there, I can get it in when I'm filming it. Um, it's developing at the moment. I put some moss around those growths because they were starting to climb and I wanted the roots to get down into the media, which they have done. So what we're looking at this year is one, two, three new growths just starting. They may or may not bloom, but at least one of them should do because of the backup plant and the backup bulbs. It's certainly strong and healthy enough to bloom. Beautiful blooms to look forward to. It won't get a repot because it hasn't long been in that pot. But what we're looking at is the rather unusual development of Sylogeny pseudo bulbs when they bloom and then what they look like after they bloom. So that's why that one's been chosen. Oh, it's not so easy to film. <laughs> Plant number four, Sylogeny, uh, sorry, Cymbidium copper. And the thing that's a bit special about this is the fact that the blooms have come out this time a totally different colour. I will be taking that problem to Mathers, where I got the plant from, to try and find out why, and then we get this season to put it right so that the next time it blooms we get the original colour but I need information to be able to do that. It will get a repot it's currently pushing out a new growth there uh, I thought I saw another one somewhere well maybe not but the chances are there will be more new growth pushing out on this it's a strong plant um, it's a young plant though um, it, it's not on you know it's not an aged plant with loads of um, leafless back bulbs. There are no leafless back bulbs. So it's a relatively young plant. Um, so that's that one. Problem with the blooming on the coloration and this one as far as growth is concerned it's going to spend some time outside. So we've got some garden time to spend with it. So that's that one. Right, plant number five, Dendrobium lindleyi. Um, still sold and known as aggregatum but accepted as a synonym. Um, as far as this one is concerned it's a true resting type dendrobium but that's not why I've chosen it because I've got many resting dendrobiums. Why I've chosen it is it's coming off that mount having the old moss taken off and getting remounted. So it's got to come out of its rest, it's got to be remounted it should also bloom if the remount doesn't mess it up and we should see the progression of the new growths up to maturity and going back into its rest. So that's got quite a, quite a lot of things going for it as far as uh, a resting dendrobium is concerned and many resting dendrobiums could be treated exactly the same as this one. So it is quite a good representative. So that's that one. 
Right, plant number six, Dendrobium prima donna, represents the nobly type hybrids, of which there are hundreds if not thousands. <laughs> uh, and they all vary in care on the grounds that they have wandered far from the original species. There is only one Dendrobium nobili, or is, although there is a very popular and attractive variety, but it's still the species. There is only one. Like Highlander, there can be only one. However, this represents the hybrids, and this one has got a repot coming up. I've got to get the cocoa husk out. I'm going to defy the laws of dendrobiums do much better in a small tight pot. Well, it's going in a bigger pot. We'll see how that does. Um, it's already in bud here, so we will get some blooms in the not too distant future on a very old cane, which is what they do. And we've got two unbloomed canes, one here and one up the back. They should bloom this year, but not yet. Their proper time would be in a little while as the day lengths get longer and the temperatures warm up. We shall see. Those two canes may not bloom. So we've got a repot, we've got some blooms definitely, possibility of blooms on new canes, and at some point down the line we should get some new growths. And we'll end up taking it into the rest. So it's got a full seasonal type care for this one. That's that one. Right, the next one is Dendrobium Hercoglossum. This one's on the list because it doesn't grow like any other Dendrobiums that I've got, in as much as when it produces new growths, which it didn't do last year due to its remount and disturbance and environmental change, quite dramatic stuff going on for this plant, it wasn't happy. So reason number one, not happy last year, let's see if we can make it happy again. Number two is its growth pattern. It's the fact that new growths grow for almost three years before they stop. We have some of these growths at the moment. Yeah, These are not last year's growth, they're the year before's. They're still in active growth through the winter. They will carry on growing through the summer. We will get blooms. We will be looking at canes that have probably finished blooming to trim off, so we've got a selection to do. One's leafless canes that are just not going to bloom again. They've used up the nodes, so we'll remove some of those. That'll tidy it up a bit. Oh, I was going to say, what on earth is that noise? I just knocked the fan behind me where I'm having to stand back. I've just knocked it and the, the stand squeaks. <laughs> Excuse the funny noise. <laughs> oh dear, I thought it was a you know, dying seagull or something. Anyway, so that's why that one's here. We need to get this one to grow this year and hopefully my environmental changes will start it into growth a lot earlier this year. We will get blooms and we should get some sort of mass blooming on this from both old canes and newer canes. So that's that one. Right, plant number eight then. This is re representing the cooler, shadier growers and um, Chlorothalids in general. Um, this is um, Mazdavalia Inca Prince. It came from mixed Mazdavalias as a lovely, strong, healthy plant. It hasn't been repotted since I got it. It's in a black pot and I can't see what the hell's going on with the roots. And it's starting to look as though it's going downhill. So I need to stop that happening. The first thing to do when you've got a problem is get it out the pot. So we'll do a repot see what we're up against, get it into a clear pot so that I can monitor what's going on. But it is still growing new growths. There are still new growths coming out of it. Um, we'll have to see what that looks like when we get it out, but it has beautiful blooms on it and hopefully we can get it to do that um, following a repot, sort of rejuvenate it. So that's that one. Right, again, representing the Pleurothalids, cooler, shadier types. This is Restrepia cuprea, but it isn't the actual species. I suspect what's happened here is a seed pod was produced. Um, this came from Sarah's, and um, there was no guarantee of what the pollen parent was. 
So although it looks incredibly like the species Cupria, if you can't guarantee the two parents, you can't call it the species. So it's got hybrid in brackets. It's in the cocoa husk. It's the last one of my Restrepias to be repotted. Has beautiful blooms and it's a relatively young plant. So what we need to do with this is get the repot done, get it in some media that's not gonna go off and grow it on this year and see if we can get it to bloom. Um, these are not too difficult to bloom and they will bloom multiple times per leaf. The blooms coming from the underside of the leaf. So Restrepia. Right, plant number 10 will be one that's being included that will not bloom. So we won't get blooms on this, but this has grown away from the centre of the plant. So that, that's why this is being chosen. It's one of my larger Miltonias and all the older parts in the plant uh, are starting to get a bit desiccated. It got far too much light and started to pale the leaves. But what we need to do with this one is rejuvenate the whole plant. So what I'll be doing is taking off the leads. So it'll get a repot and it will come off like here so that it's got a single back bulb supporting the two latest growths. Those will produce new growths. And the new growths, it'll be potted in these pieces because it'll end up in pieces. Those pieces will be planted in such a way that the current latest growths have got room to produce their new growths in new media. And this year we'll, we will be keeping it in a lesser light position to try and get this to colour up a bit better. And a lot of the roots became aerial on those growths and it absolutely bloomed its head off. It's currently in an exhausted state, so it needs rejuvenating. It needs all the older part of the plant taking off, because although it's, it's storage area, it helps the reserves with the plant. It also sucks reserves out of the plant when it's trying to grow new stuff. If these were big plump bulbs, that would be a different story, but they're not. So this one's got quite a bit of work to be done on it at repotting stage, and then monitored and a new environment to grow in. Right, uh, number 11 I think we're up to. You'll get the pop-ups if I say it wrong. Um, this is a Miltoniopsis. This is a primary hybrid, so two species crossed together. Um, all my species have been lost during the, the previous year. I've lost the lot. This is my only sort of species left, even though it's a primary cross. It's not a complex hybrid, let's put it that way. Now this will need a repot for the best of reasons. The pot's too small and it's full of roots and I can't keep it hydrated. <laughs> That's a good reason for a repot. Now this latest growth out to the right hasn't actually bloomed. It may still do that, but at the moment it's not getting hydrated enough. It's got cocoa husk in that pot, so multiple reasons for a repot. It's got a good root system. Let's see if we can maintain that and get this to become a nice vigorous plant. I mean, this was the previous growth and that bloomed. And this is the latest one, as yet to bloom. That doesn't mean it will and it doesn't mean it won't. But we need to get this going and get some more new growth coming out. And a, a decent, it's got a good root system which we need to push on into a pot more suited to it and a media that can control the moisture level, no soggy and not drying out so quick. <laughs> uh, which means, so you've got two ways. Oh, quick, right, we'll diverse. Roger's tip, Roger's top tip. How do you control the moisture in a pot when you want a plant to stay quite moist without getting soggy. Two choices, the media itself and the size of the pot. So if I put this in small bark in a pot that size, it will dry in no time at all. Yeah. So you might say, oh, we'll use a media that holds moisture then. Well, it could go in sphagnum moss. Miltoniopsis will grow in sphagnum moss and that would keep it moist and it could stay in a small pot. In fact, it should stay in a small pot with sphagnum moss, otherwise it will be too wet for too long. But if I put it in a bigger pot with small bark, 
it won't dry out anywhere near as fast, it definitely won't be soggy, and it won't need repotting for a long time. So there you go. So that's that one and the sort of logic why it's getting included. Miltoniopsis for me have never been easy, um, but I really do want to keep this going. Now this one's got fun written all over it. <laughs> Not. Um, this is from a friend. I desperately want to keep these going, this going because the blooms are gorgeous. Um, it's an Oncidium, but it's actually an Odontoglossum and it's Anna Claire, um, bought from a friend in bloom. Now it's potted in rock wool, rock wool cubes, with some other bits and pieces in with it, not sure what. Now I have an allergy with the uh, rock wool type stuff, you know it's loft insulation basically but in another form and I would probably get a rash so this is going to get repotted a bit different because I will have something to dunk my hands in while I'm working with this stuff so that I can rinse my hands off frequently and hopefully not get a rash. <laughs> but this is coming up for its repot, the new roots are growing, yeah, we've got a really mouldy pseudo bulb here that's right next to the new growth and another old shriveled one that needs to come off. So this is not growing well at the moment but it does have this new growth which hasn't fully formed its pseudo bulb. So this is a sort of strange repot, something I've never tackled before and in addition to that it's sort of bordering on a recovery plant because obviously parts of the plant have got to be cut off. This is a now job. <laughs> this needs doing very soon. So that's that one. And plant number 13, unlucky for some. Cobblers, it's just a number like any other one. Unlucky. <laughs> anyway, this was one that just caught my eye at Burnham's because it was such a strong, healthy looking plant. And it was in amongst the other Oncidiums, which weren't quite so healthy and strong looking, so it stuck out. And I thought, I wonder what that is. And I had a look, and it's, um, oh, are they on Costelli's? Yeah, on Costelli's Catatanti, which I've had before, but it got given to somebody else. Um, so I got this because it's a big, strong, healthy plant. It needs a repot, it's got loads of algae in the pot, it has some new growths growing. It has yet to bloom for me, but it has bloomed in the past. I suspect this is one that Sarah bought in and um, it finished blooming without selling, so she just stuck it out in the nursery. And it just happens to have grown really well. That doesn't always happen, but this one has. So a repot, grow on these new growths and see if we can get some blooms on it. If we do get some blooms, you're in for quite a spectacle because the bloom spikes are over a meter long and can have 50 plus blooms on and they're a gorgeous color. So the goal with that is to try and achieve that this year. So that's that one. And number 14 is my Paphiopedalum. <laughs> it's, it's the only plant that doesn't need a tag because it's written on the pot. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Um, this came from Burnham's, a um, bit of a whim on my part. I used to have some Paphiopedlums, but they never did that well for me. They, they struggled with the intense heat at the other place, a bit too much for them. Anyway, this has a growth that has bloomed and it has two others. One of which has got something going on down there, probably a new leaf and this growth here is also producing a new leaf. Now whether those are going to bloom or not, I don't know. So that's the sort of game with this one. It hasn't been repotted since I got it. These do not, they're not too keen on disturbance, some say, and others say they really take off with a repot. I suspect the difference between those two thoughts are that the ones that take off really well are the ones that come out of old media that they're not happy in. <laughs> so this will get a repot and then we'll try and grow it on, but um, don't hold your breath, they grow very slow. But it would be nice if I could get this to bloom again by the end of the year. It's my only one, I may get some more, but this is the one for this year anyway. Okay, the fact that I have a number of um, Phalaenopsis now, I felt that I ought to offer one on the list 
Whether it gets selected or not, I don't know. Um, most people who grow orchids have got some Phalaenopsis, but I would suggest they are the ones that have already got more than enough care videos and stuff on the internet. I doubt if I'm going to come up with anything new, but I'm offering the choice. Now this is a store-bought um, one from the store-bought series, currently coming into Spike. Um, so all that's going to happen with this this year is hopefully we will grow some new growth. Um, I will be staking this Spike very carefully so as I don't break it, purely because it lives on the kitchen window sill and I don't want it, you know, knocking against something and breaking. Sorry, I can see a mealybug. Oh, it's dead anyway. <laughs> good. Um, it won't need a repot. It's in good bark and it's got a mass of roots in the pot. It does actually have cocoa husk in that pot, so perhaps we will repot it. But we'll let it bloom first and then after blooming it would normally have a little bit of a rest um, and then come back into active growth, which is a good time to catch the repot at whatever time of year that is. So that's that one. Right, representing the Vandacious type, one of two. What are we up to now? 16, I think. Uh, nearly there. Um, is my Renanthera. Now, I'm reasonably certain this is Im Shutiana, um, but the um, process of elimination and going back over old videos at the time when I got them and when I changed the way they were potted, I'm pretty certain that's what this one is. Um, no guarantees though. <laughs> Blooms would be good. <laughs> That'll be the day. But why I've chosen this is it, <clears throat> it's sort of struggling because <clears throat> it's growing the way it wants to, which is putting out aerial roots and they are very, very difficult to hydrate. Um, they're also not very flexible. They break very easily. So you're sort of stuck with them. So this is going to be a bit difficult. But the way I'm planning on dealing with this one is it's going to go in the bathroom on the bathroom windowsill, which will give it very bright light. It's indirect, intense sunshine. So it's sunshine through a slatted blind and frosted glass, but the light level is very high. It's also a warm room. And I think the change of environment might kickstart that, but I will have to water it a lot more often. The problem being, there's very few roots in that media. So when I water the media, the plant's not getting hydrated. You see what I mean? <laughs> so this is a difficult one. I will try and work something out to uh, aid and abet getting more hydration into this. But that is a choice. The other vandacious one coming up next is a, well, real problem. Right, so the next one is my orange vanda, or ascascenda, I would suggest, um, that is dying, basically. It is being lost as we're looking at it now. Every time I pick it up, another leaf drops off. I've just taken another one off now. And it has been suggested that to recover this, it needs to be cut off some of these woody bits removed and it needs some moss around the stem seal the bottom cinnamon or whatever and then it needs to be put somewhere where it gets moisture and is much much warmer so guess where that one's going that's going in the bathroom in a similar vein and what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a glass um, so that contains some humidity and Put loose moss in that glass with a little bit of water in the bottom the plant won't be in the water and put it in the bathroom where it gets the light and the heat and see if it will grow some roots otherwise it's just going to collapse and die so if you choose this one <laughs> it certainly might not make it to the end of the year but it will be quite an experiment to try and get that recovered so that would be the reason for putting this one in, is to try and recover it. But to all intents and purposes, it's not far off dead at the moment, so I need to do this quickly. I might even do it later today. Yes, I'll film it. Right, so the last one, plant number 18, is my Zygopetalum Luisendorf. Um, badly desiccated older bulbs, that often happens, 
but it's better if it doesn't. Those are leafless bulbs. And what we've got is two extensions on here, so you can tell what's going to happen. It, it needs a repot, um, cocoa husk again, and I want to refresh the media. And on top of that, it's heading in two distinct directions with the oldest dying part in the middle of the plant, so it's, it needs dividing. So we have a big, strong, healthy bulb here um, with a nice new growth coming out with roots. Now is the time. So if we catch that one right and treat those roots sensibly, we will save that part of the plant, no problem. The other side over here is just finished blooming. Uh, blooms are gone now, so they're, I'll trim them off now before I put it back. And again, we have the plant heading off in a direction, but what we don't have on this part of the plant is a new growth. The new growth is in fact the one that's just finished blooming and the roots didn't quite make it into the media. So hopefully they will start growing again and hopefully we can get another actual new growth coming on that part of the plant. So that's what we're up to. So the both parts will go in the same pot and um, that, you know, so we'll have a repot and um, two parts, both into one to grow on and hopefully get to bloom on the next new growths. This one may bloom. It's got a hell of a bulb to back it up there. <laughs> um, the other growth, when it eventually produces a new growth, may not bloom, but it will put some strength into that part of the plant. So there we go. Okay, so there you go. That's the 18 plants you can choose from. So in the comments, all you need to do is list up to eight of the plants you would like to see as the project orchids. Make sure the numbers are separated because if you type one and then type two and you don't leave a gap, I'll take it as 12. <laughs> Make sure I can see what you're up to. So as I said, you can vote for anything from one up to eight. It don't have to be in any sequence. The sequence you're voting is irrelevant. I will be adding up the total votes per plant and that's what will determine it. So, you know, 10 votes for this plant, as opposed to four votes for that plant and none for that plant. That's how I will determine the top eight to choose, um, mainly. <laughs> this is one that I'm gonna override. Quite honestly, if you think about it, you could um, utilize your votes perhaps a bit better, knowing that I'm forcing Dendrobium lindleyi on you. So voting for it's a bit of a waste of a vote, isn't it? Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> you can vote for it if you like, but it's going to get chosen anyway. Um, so there you go. Those are the plants. Get your votes in on this video via the comments section up to eight. OK, it's as simple as that. I'll do the work adding them all up and everything. You don't have to worry about it. And um, if you watch on a smart TV or something where you don't, you can't type in comments or anything. You might need to revert to your phone to actually have a look at the video and leave a comment, depending on the app, I presume. But most people can leave comments. That's why I've chosen that method. And we will come up <coughs> with the results in the not too distant future. And video number one, don't forget, I may not be filming them in the sequence. I've just listed them because there might be something urgent for one, which means it becomes the first video. Yeah, so <laughs> just because plant number one was the first one I filmed today, it doesn't mean it will be the first video. But there will be a logical sequence of eight once we've decided what they are, and the sequence will stay the same and repeat throughout the year. So get your votes in, don't be shy, and um, you don't have to give a reason, just list your numbers. Um, if you want to give your reasons, you can. But, you know, and then I'll sort out um, the numbers of votes and everything, tell you how the results have come out, and then we'll get going with the Project Orchids during the first week of February for whichever plant I choose to be the first one. Thanks for joining in. It's important for me that you join in with this rather than me just dictate, as has often been the case. <laughs> with the Project Orchids. So by joining in and allowing the joining in, I'm hoping more people will watch the videos as we progress through the year. And thanks for watching this one. See you next time.